Tonight's all about remembrance, man. As you can see, is that still there? Oh, yeah, it's still there. All the stuff that's gone on in our lives, and, and lately, i got to tell you, man, it's been, uh, it's been really on my heart, the, the, and I've spoken to my son quite a bit about this stuff, about our legacy, what we're leaving behind to the, the generations, our kids and our grandkids and our great-grandchildren and things of that nature. Because, um, you know, uh, once, we're, once we're dead and gone, we ain't going to see them again until they're in heaven. Amen? And once we're gone... Who are they going to have around here to tell them what time it is with Jesus, right? Yep. So we pass that stuff right on down, and, and we're going to look at, at a story here. I'm going to move through it pretty quick here. Um, it, it's, uh, oh, that could have been bad right there, man. i got to take my old studies out. This one says, the epistles walking as children of light. Pretty sure that's not the one we're doing today. <laughs> no, let's get rid of that one right there. Yeah, i got them all over the place, this Bible. Actually, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be look, talking about memorial stones. I'm going to share with, share with you guys what all this is up here. It's pretty cool, man. Do, let me ask you real quick. Do, do any of you have any memories of the Roadhouse? Through the 15 years that we've been here, man, yeah. there's a lot of memories. You know, I've forgotten more things that I wish I could remember. But you start going back in Facebook and stuff and those albums, and you start going back into way back to 20 uh, 2012, 2011, stuff like that when we first started doing all that stuff. And I got to tell you something, man. With all seriousness, we were all a lot younger. Yeah. <laughs> a lot younger, man. Praise the Lord. Check this out. Here's, here's what the opening is tonight. What did, what did we forget to remember? That's, isn't that steep? Like, like ponderosious deep? Is that a word, ponderosious? Okay. Ponderosious, like something you really want to ponder. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of an ancient Portuguese, but anyway, not important right now. What do, we, what do we forget to remember? Things that are important, man, that we need to share, not only with our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, maybe great-greats. Is there any great-great-grandparents in here tonight? Oh, look over there, Steamboat. Arnold, do? Wow. Tribe gets busy young. Hallelujah. Okay, maybe you're back in the back over there too. Okay. Hey, did you guys uh, catch that Harlem Shake, by the way? There was like a thing going around years ago, and everybody was doing the Harlem Shake. That goof up here on the stage behind me, that was him right there. Arnold Payne in the helmet. That's right. That dude can cut a rug, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what's happening here, where we are right now? Let me pray. Father, we thank you for, for this night, Lord. We thank you for your word that you're going to share with us. And, Father, the, the, to put it upon our hearts to, to set up those memorial stones, Lord, that we can remember and that the generations to come can remember and remember what you did, the greatness of you, God, the greatness of you, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, what you've done in all of our lives, Father, all through the years, all the things that you've done, the blessings, the miracles, the ups and the downs, all of it, Lord. It needs to be remembered and passed along to the next generation and on and on and on until you call us all home in Jesus' name. So, Father, we invite you to be with you this night. Open our eyes and ears and our hearts. The message you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Where we're at right now um, in Joshua 3 is that uh, Moses is dead. Forty years has gone by since they left Egypt and went on to the Red Sea and all that, part of the Red Sea, then on into the wilderness with the manna, uh, the quail, whacking rocks with sticks and water coming out of them. There's a lot of crazy stuff. A couple of kings they took on out there and battled them, and Moses had got to see the promised land from a mountain, and then God outed him from here, man. He died, and God buried him somewhere and didn't tell nobody where he was at, and handed the baton over to Joshua. And so now as Joshua's, they're moving Joshua, and three million plus Israelites are moving down through the valley towards Canaan, the promised land. And, and yet again, there's a barrier in front of them. And it, it wasn't just any old barrier. It was the Jordan River. Amen? No big deal, man. The thing's only three, six, seven feet deep. It ain't that big of a deal. Unless you try to cross it in the springtime, which is exactly what they were doing right here. And all the snow melted off the mountain and turned that little river into something that looks more like the Colorado River. And so here they are, and that's where we're at right now. And God's already been talking to Joshua in the first two chapters about 
going across that Jordan and into the promised land. He's going to give it to him. And then as you kind of move, move up through here, you get into chapter 2, and they run into, he sends some spies over to Jericho because they're at the river now, and they're looking at this big old fortified city of Jericho over there. And, you know, well, let me just, we'll do a quick honest test. Even though God has done miraculous and amazing things in your life, do you sometimes still doubt and have fears? Anybody in here? Heck yeah, man. Welcome to the human race, right? You know? Sometimes we just need to be mindful of God's word and listen to him. Remember that still small voice? Be still and know that I'm God. My God, I, I just want to, I want to desperately play chicken with this train. And God's like, I don't think it's a good idea. You shouldn't do that. We probably shouldn't, huh? Has anybody ever played chicken with a train? Never works out. You know, I've never had anybody raise their hand here. Weird, huh? Check this out. This spy, these spies went into Jericho, man. They snuck in. And this, this harlot named Rahab hit him out. And the king found out about him and stuff like that. And she ended up lowering him out their window after they kind of made a deal with him. But what they learned was this, that everybody there was terrified of him. And the reason they were terrified was because they knew that God, there was only one God, and he was on their side. This, this lady in Jericho even told him, man, we, we heard about the Red Sea being parted. We heard about the two kings that you guys beat up out there in the wilderness. We heard all that stuff. So the enemy remembers. The world sees what we're doing. And if you guys think the world's not watching, you're crazy, man. You're diluted. The world is watching you because you know what? They're desperate for the king as well. They just sometimes need a little nudge. Amen? Sometimes God has to send a strange person into their life to part the Red Sea or to stop the Jordan from, from flowing. And maybe you're that person. Amen? But we got to remember we got to remember the things that God did in our lives, not only for the generation, but for ourselves, man, because he can do amazing, powerful, miraculous stuff like this church right here. I guarantee you, man, when we started this thing, all of us that are here, there's many of us that are still here. Who's been here from the beginning, by the way? Anybody here? Oh, there's quite a few of you here. We didn't know what the heck we were doing. We didn't. We sat right over there and prayed, man. Lord, what do we do? <laughs> we don't know what to do. I saw movement early on, though, man movement with this group of people we had an earthquake here one time and they all ran out the door and left me in here there was all kinds of movement here i remember that i have a stone for that there's a big old what written on it yeah then we started that whole ptp program protect the pastor yeah they still laugh about that when they're like spice came back and told joshua they're terrified of us they're absolutely terrified of us. And, you know, as time goes on, we're going to see, we, as you continue through the book of Joshua, but not tonight, you'll see where doubt continued to creep back in every time there was an adversary. There was something that came up against them, like, oh, man, they were doing it all through the wilderness, too. You know, God gave them manna, remember that? All that cool bread-looking stuff that fell? And, you know, for, before that, they're like, why'd you bring us out here to die, to starve, and then manna? You know, like, ooh, this is pretty good. And after a couple weeks, like, this stuff sucks. You know, we want something else. We want meat. And he's like, really, you snots? And you know what? He did, speaking of snot, they ate so much quail that was coming out of their noses. But that's all <laughs> in the Old Testament. Great stories in there. But look what it says right here in Joshua 3. I'm going to bless this. Then Joshua rose early in the morning. This is after they're, now they're, at the, they're kind of near the Jordan, maybe a mile away. Joshua rose early in the morning and set out from, from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan. And he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you, may not, that you may know the way which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. I read a really crazy tradition about that verse right there. It was like Jewish or Hebrew or whatever. That, um, and it's just tradition. It's not biblical. I'm going to share it with you. That the... Whoever was telling the story at the time believed that the Ark of the Covenant, when it was carried by the Levite priest, you know, would like burn snakes and scorpions and even the ground as they walked with it, which would be the trail for them to follow. I've never read that part in the Bible, but it sounded really cool. I even saw one there that said jets would come out from the bottom and lift the Levites up off the ground. I think that was a bit much. However, I will give you this much. If you read the book of Ezekiel, there's a crazy machine with a lot of wheels that does some crazy stuff in the book of Ezekiel. And don't forget Elijah just chilling out with Elijah and saying, whoop, bam, a chariot of fire snatches him up and knocks Elijah down, and off he goes. 
There's cool stuff in the Bible, man. There's just lots of cool stuff. So now he's got these guys, and Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Then Joshua spoke to the priests. Okay, hold on. That, the first film was the plan, by the way. <laughs> I probably blew right past it, but they're used to me doing that. So he didn't really tell them what the plan was yet. All right? There's, there's a river, and clearly we got to get across it somehow. So now he goes to the priest, and, and then Joshua spoke to the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. So they were going in front of the people with the Ark of the Covenant. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel. This is God talking to Joshua now. That they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And you shall command the priests who, who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. So now remember this springtime, so the Jordan's now way bigger. Swelled up at the harvest time, probably 10, 15 feet deep now. And God just told Joshua, I want you to go tell your four guys, the Levites, I want you to take that 800-pound ark that's lined with gold and covered with gold too and go stand in the water with it. And, and look, anybody in their right mind would be like, what are you talking about, dude? You want us to go into that raging river with that ark? That thing, you, you know something that, that's, that's uh, similar or, or kind of the same about the Ark of the Covenant? And, like, you know the uh, Spanish galleons that, that, like, sunk all around Florida and stuff like that, and they always find gold bars in there? You know what they have in common? Gold don't float. And he's going, go out into that deep water with that thing. I mean, the faith here is amazing. But now look what happens. He goes to the people now. That's the second bill on the people. So Joshua, and the ch so Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive, them out, drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites, the Methanites, the Alcoholites, the Lustalites. All the ites in our life. Amen. He said, I'm going to drive them all out. And behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. This is a very important verse there because they believed, and for good reason, that whenever, whenever they, wherever they were traveling, if the Ark was with them, they were okay. If, because they saw that as God, God with them, with the cherubim over there, you know, and Moses would, would uh, God would speak to Moses. So wherever that ark was going, as long as they could see it, they were pretty good. But no, you couldn't get near the thing, man. I, I, one guy did. It did not work out well for him, man. You know, I think, was his name Uriah? Was that his name? Uriah? Uzziah? Oh, dang. You know, I was so close right now to going, no wonder the band called herself Uriah Heap, because he died in a heap. But it was Uzziah. So that doesn't work. We'll just pass on that, brother. Okay, moving on. So he goes, the Lord of the earth is uh, before you in, in the Jordan. Now, therefore, take yourselves 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe, that it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And those who bore the Ark came to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests who bore the Ark dipped, their, dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows its banks during this whole time of harvest, that the waters came down from upstream, stood still, and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zeratan. So these guys, all right, because in my brain, this is what I hear. All right, that these four guys probably thought, and they did, but they probably thought, man, we got the coolest job ever. We get to carry this gold-plated ark around, acacia wood ark, on gold-covered sticks and everything, and everybody, you know, we just go way out there. It's 2,000 meters, about, it's about, you know, half a mile, three-quarters of a mile behind the ark that the whole, every time they moved, they would travel. But in, in this situation, I think it might have been a little bit different, man, because Joshua was a very powerful man. And, and what I mean by that, powerful in faith in God. And so he was, he was a great leader in, in Israel. And when he told these guys to go, I just wondered in my head while I was reading through all this stuff, man, there had to be at least one or two of them go, dude, really? 
You want us to walk into that river with this heavy old box, man? And nope, you guys are like a half a mile away. If anything happens, <laughs> down we go, man. Last thing they're going to see is our sandals. Because <laughs> they ain't going to let go of those sticks, man. But you know what they did? They were faithful. Now, I, if, if I was writing this myself and I really wanted to be powerful, I'd say that the priest went to the edge and they just leapt in there, man. But actually what it said here was that they put, they kind of dipped their toes in, man. <laughs> Got to the edge and like, oh boy, and they dipped. Now check this out. Here's a fun part that sometimes it gets overlooked when, when we read through the Bible really fast because this is a perfect story for naysayers right here. Say, well, I can discount that. I mean, obviously, there's three million of them or plus. Joshua could have just sent 20,000 or 30,000 way up river, throw a bunch of rocks into the water. Easy peasy, right? He didn't part the Jordan, just so you know. He stopped it. There's a big difference here. Sometimes I've talked to people and like, yeah, he parted the Jordan. I'm like, no, he parted the Red Sea. That was a whole different Bible study way back. This he stopped. But see, God is so cool in his foresight for us that he would even see places that could potentially give us a struggle and go, well, that's an easy one, man. They just stopped up the river. That's all. Threw a bunch of rocks in there until they made a dam. And that would be one big dam, all right, because that river was pretty wide and the water was pretty, pretty good current. But you guys can see how someone could come to that conclusion, right? Well, there's an easy way to explain it. People do it all the time. Watch the History Channel and see some of the stupid stuff that's on the History Channel, man, when they're trying to disprove the Bible, you know? And I'm like, oh, my God. I hope I'm there when you have to stand before them and explain this stupid show. <laughs> that's going to be a good one right there. But look what God did. He added this in here for us all. Then the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over Jordan. Dry ground. That's right, man. That, that river rolled up in a heap some 20 miles, 20 miles away. It was heaped up and dried out. Any other time, if you try to walk into a river like that, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to go knee deep in mud, right? But God had already planned it out, and he does the same thing for us, and that's what we've got to watch for, man. Even when we go through struggles in life, we're going to do it on dry ground. We may feel like we're slogging through the mud because we probably put ourselves there in the first place, amen? But nonetheless, he's always there on dry ground. You know when we gave our life to Christ, we talked about being, being set on a rock, right? There was nothing in there that was talked about being set on mud when we gave our life to Christ. There is, a, there is another part of that story that talks about people trying to build a house on what? Sand. Never works out, never holds up. But since we've given our life to Christ, one thing after another, and, and here's the thing, man, so many things happen to us, we start forgetting the things, and we, we actually start compressing. I think that comes with getting older, doesn't it, when you start compressing memories? You know, what's, what happened 20 years ago, you're like, yeah, two months ago. Exactly. You know, something like that. we got to remember so that our children and our children's children and their children can continue on to have the life that we all love now, the life that, that we live in victory because of Jesus Christ, amen? We can't be selfish and hang on to that stuff, man. Of course, we love our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, right? You can't love anybody more than sharing Jesus with them. There's nothing more you can do in a loving way than share the King of Kings with them and help them find their way, amen? So we, we got a bunch of this stuff here, and we're going to look at this last part of Joshua here, the memorial stones. And this is really cool because the, the way, the, the way he, that God had instructed him to do this, he didn't want them to forget all the way back to Egypt, not just the Jericho, but all the way back to Egypt and, and even before the Red Sea, all the way back to, the, to all the stuff that went on, even before Pharaoh, when, when, when Moses, remember when Moses found a little basket and he just happened to be found by the king's daughter or the Pharaoh's daughter? And he was raised in there. And all these, these things, these hands were in motion in his life that led up to that, that moment when God had told him. Remember uh, when Moses said, let my people go. I should have got my staff for that. <clears throat> Dang it. That would have been way better. I kind of look like Charlton Heston, I think. A little? No. Never. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, God had already planned this to go, look, 
all this stuff that's been going on, you guys are going to forget a bunch of it. Why would, why would we forget that? Because life goes on, and we get busy, and things start happening before long. We're, we're focused on all the junk. Remember the little crazy little stuffed animal I had? Wasn't he cool? Yeah. Dude, I love that guy. I don't even know where it is right now, man, but he was like my little companion during COVID because that's what that was. That was when we couldn't be at church here, so I was making these things at home. And I love that little dude. He was like so, um, I don't know what the right word is, descriptive of me. Yeah. What do you mean, oh, yeah? What the heck? Do we have security? Yeah. I can't make you throw your own mom out, can I? <laughs> okay. Forget it. Forget it. I brought it up. Look at uh, Joshua 4 real quick. And it came to pass, when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men, from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, not the side, not the banks, from the middle, man. The middle, it'll look, they'll, they're going to look like river stones, right? They're not going to be all jaggedy like the desert stones that are hanging out over there. They're going to be smooth and round where water's been running across them. That, that was God's plan. And He goes, Look, and take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of Jordan, from the place where the priests feet stood firm, you shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Keep this in mind. While all this is happening, Jericho's right there. Like, you can see Jericho from where they're at. It was right on the other side of the banks of the, of the Jordan, and that's where they were going. They didn't, like, cross over 20 miles from Jericho. They were, they were opposite Jericho the, on the other side of the Jordan, and nobody was coming. Like, you would think if there was a group of people coming across a river that big, you would probably, you know, put an army at your border and keep millions of people from coming across, right? <laughs> and I'm talking about the Bible. Come on, you guys. Jeepers, creepers. Then Joshua called the 12 whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time and come and say, what do these stones mean to you? We have a lot of stones in this room right now, man. There's a lot of memories here. We have a lot of people here. Um, I've seen, I don't get to see everybody, but I know I've seen CMA. There's one right there. Ooh, right there. There's health fighters right there. There's black sheep. I've seen deacons. Uh, po Bob? Who am I missing? Anybody? Did I get everybody? Who? Righteous ones. We got our over here. Where's righteous ones at? Oh, yeah, they're right there. He's hiding behind that person's head. Okay. Yeah, American Legion. There we go. I knew there was one more. Okay. Rodez. Johnny and the Sinners. Yeah! <laughs> it doesn't count when the drummer does that, dude. <laughs> Can't vote for yourself for mayor. <laughs> I just wonder, I'm looking out here at everybody, how many, how many memories do you guys have? Not just of the Roadhouse, you know, things that we've done here, but your own lives, your own walk with Jesus. And, you know, some of you have been serving Jesus for decades, man. Like almost your entire life, most likely. What are the things that we're in danger of forgetting? The things that we're not, that we're so in danger of not remembering that we should be sharing with other people. I mean, sometimes we get so focused in. And I know, man, sharing the gospel is what it's all about, man. Amen. But check this out. If we're just so zeroed in on like the fundamentals of it, of just getting to that person, grab them by the throat and shake them until they receive Jesus as their Savior. The best, the best tool that we have in the toolbox for us to share our faith out there is us. It's our walk with Christ and what he's brought us through, man. You don't have to know every single verse in the Bible. I sure don't, man. But I can tell people out there in the world, well, you know what? This is what Jesus did for me. This is what, this is what happened in my life, man. And it can happen to you, too. You can call me a liar if you want. I don't really, it doesn't really matter. I got the scars to prove it. Nonetheless... There's, you find people out there in the world, and you'll start sharing your story. And you know what? More often than not, they'll be like, man, that's exactly what I'm going through right now. 
How, why are you here? What brought you here? Ooh, it's on and cracking at that point, right? Yeah. And look what, look what he just said right here. When your children come and ask in time, saying, what do these stones mean to you? What are we going to tell them? What are we going to tell our children and our grandchildren when they go, why did you serve God for 50 years? What, what was it about Jesus, man? I mean, we see that you're Christian, you know, and you don't drink, don't smoke. What do you do? I know. That was, a, that was like an age test right there. Hey, it's kind of sort of biblical. It's Adam and an ant or something like that, right? I don't know. Creepy, dude. What would you tell if you had, if you had like an opportunity just to sit down with a grandchild without any distractions like PlayStation or cell phones, stuff like that, you know? You could just spend time with your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. What would you like to say to them tonight? Like if you had something, a memory, man, some part of your faith, your walk, things that, that happen in your life, that you could just tell them, you know what? This might sound strange and unbelievable, but I want to tell you what the Lord did for me on this particular day, in this particular part of my life. I promise you, you will have their undivided attention. Amen? Because they respect you and they look up to you because they've seen you be that in that person of integrity walking in faith. Amen? Amen? All their lives. Don't think they're not watching and don't think they don't want to talk to you about this stuff. It's such a life from the stinking pit of hell. They want to hear your words, man. They want to hear your voice. I think they're even getting tired of PlayStation and social media a little bit. Maybe, I don't know. But look how he closes up here. He goes like this. Um... Uh, these stones mean to you. Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan and the waters of the Jordan were cut off, and those stones shall be as for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. You guys are all memorial stones to the children of your tribe, man. Whatever that tribe is, whoever, whoever they are. They're looking up to you right now. You may not know it, but I'm here to tell you they are because I've, I've experienced it with my own grandchildren. Amen. And this whole thing about legacy is super important to me because i got to share with you guys something here. This is just a hard fact. No one here gets out alive. Ain't going to happen. Even if we get raptured out of here, this body ain't going. Can I get an amen to that? Before that happens, though, we have so much that we can give back. Amen. In, in the person, the form of memories. Memories of what God's done for us. And of course, we want to share the gospel with them. We want to tell them all about Jesus, man, when that door opens. But you, you guys, you, you guys ever remember having grandparents in here? You guys ever remember talking to your grandparents and stuff like that? And just how amazing it was, man, the stories they had and stuff. How many of you feel really. Sometimes, maybe I'll just go with me, how regretful that I am that I didn't push deeper with Grandpa or Grandma and the plethora of history and stuff. I mean, this, my grandparents, personally, they lived through the Depression, man. Part of World War I, definitely World War II. I mean, there, there was things that, that now I search the Internet for information on, man, and I had it right there, man, in front of me. Welcome to humanity, right? So what we decided to do are these memorial stones here. And this this will be a display, you know, in the back. And, and basically what it is is you grab one of these little rocks here. Uh, let's see. Here we go. You grab a rock. And you're going to write, if you choose to, you write a memory. Not the whole dang memory, just the title, okay? They're not that big of rocks. All right. Now, I, and I want to share something real quick, a, a fact check, all right? That dude's video, the English guy, <laughs> or wherever he was from, I don't know. Where, I don't even remember that, that news guy doing. We had a bunch of people early on coming here, and we were quite the oddity around here. But now we're normal. <laughs> um, he's, like, said, you know, I, I, what was it, drug abuse, something else in prison? I never went to prison, you guys. I don't know where that dude got that from, man. And I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody that did go to prison, but I never did. They tried. Oh, did they try. They tried. People tried to kill me, and Mama tried. 
Everybody tried with me. And the only one that could get to me was Jesus Christ. It was not Bobby McGee. Okay, so check this out. Mine says, this is from Denver. This says the Six Shooter Shuffle. Six Shooter Shuffle. Would that be anything that anyone is interested in hearing a Roadhouse story of? Look, you guys are like, yeah, that sounds good. I'll tell you about it after church sometime. So you come and grab a stone here. If you got something you want to write on here, write it on here. But make sure you put your name on it so that people can come and ask you what your memory is, man, and continue to share these memories down the road and down the road and down the road. You know what? I think I'm going to do something like this with my grandkids over at their houses. I'm going to go, hey, let's do a memory stone thing, man, and just write little memories because the fact of the matter is I can't remember too much about my grandpa. I remember what he looked like now, uh, but it was so long ago that he passed away. I don't even really remember ever talking to him now, but I know I did, and I, I count that as a great loss of my life. It happened. What can I do on my part now to fix it? I can make sure that doesn't happen in my grandchildren's life. And my great grandchildren's life. Amen. Here we go. Here's your here's the application. Now we're gonna get on. It's actually getting a little better in here, isn't it? Yeah. I've only had three wardrobe changes since I got here, but that's cool. It's very hot up here, you guys. Take the time to remember and share it. Take time to come on up here as we're fellowship and eating. Oh my Atlanta. The food that's on the other side of that wall right there. Mm. What's that stuff called? It's like a 10 different ways to say it. Media? Video. Like. Okay. Anyway, that, that dish is really good, all right? And it's not a goat or anything like that. I don't think it's like steak or something. Chuck Rose, okay. And there's all kinds of other really cool stuff we're going to have out. We're going to be passing out some horde of orders around here in a little while. And there's going to be a Bluesville contest up here, a blues singer. So Chris, you're going to come around and actually write lyrics with you about some subject you want to do. Quick, quick question. Anybody remember Mac Davis? Remember at the end of the show when he'd go around and just like write songs out of his audience? Okay, basically the same thing. He was very cool, but not nearly as cool as Crusher. So Crusher will be coming around and checking with you. We have so much to share with all the generations that come. It's our legacy, and we need to remember we can't forget. Amen? Check it out. We're going to wrap this thing up for tonight so we can get on with having some food here. Is anybody hungry in here? Yeah. I know I am. We've got a, we bought a, got a bunch of cool stuff going on. Are we going to be throwing axes? Sure. We have an axe and knife throwing next door. They're going to be shooting teacher cannons, so keep your head on a swivel. You know, There will be things flying at you and stuff like that. It's great having you all. I thank you for being here for the 15th anniversary. This is a memorial stone all of in itself, 15 years. At the Roadhouse. It's hard to believe. It feels like it's been 5 or 10, to be honest with you. It doesn't seem like 15. But I'm, uh, I'm down for another 15, if you guys are. Let's just keep it rolling. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your word, Lord. And we thank you for this church. And we thank you for 15 years of, of all these faithful, this faithful tribe you brought here, Father, from all kinds of different places, all different clubs, groups, ministries. And we're just... We're together as one here, Father. We thank you for that tonight, Lord. And, and our desire is that everybody does know your Son and Savior. That's why we're here, Lord. That's why you planted us in this town, in Purdue, Lord, to reach those that are lost in this place that you want us, just like you sent them to that exact location at the Jordan, knowing exactly where you were going to stop that river and walk them into the Promised Land, Father. And I thank you that each and every one of us knows you as Savior. We've been walked across that Jordan ourselves, Father. We've been walked into our own Promised Land that you set for us, Lord. And Father, I ask that, that as we continue on our journey here, you help us to remember. Help us to set those stones, those memorial stones out so that we don't forget and that we can faithfully pass them on to generation after generation. But right now, there may be a person or two or three or four that's never known your Son as Savior. And tonight, we come together as a family here, Father, in one accord, agreeing that tonight is their night, Father. We invite your Holy Spirit to come down upon them, touch their hearts, speak to their hearts, Father, move their hearts, Lord, as we pray together as a family. Father God, we ask you to have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father God, I sin against you, Lord, and I ask you to forgive me my sin. And Jesus, I invite you into my heart to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and put me on that road. You'll have me travel. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord for that. Happy 15th anniversary. If you happen to say that prayer for the first time or the 50th time, Put it on an L kit and stick it over there in that bucket by Steamboat is More. It's kind of over that way a little bit there. 
I'd love to get in touch with you. And Father, we do lift up this food to you as well, Father, and all the rest of the stuff that's going to be happening here in this celebration, Father. We ask you to bless that to the nourishment of our body, and we thank you for those that prepared it and those that are going to clean up, Father. Father, tonight, now we give you this night as a continued night of fellowship amongst each other in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Keep your eyes on Jesus. All right, let's go. We're going to have some prayer. Women over here praying, some men praying over there. Come and get some prayer. Don't be a square, and I will see you all. Outside.